Take two! I defeat the bears. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Summit Tech. Once again, today we're going to be talking about how to repaste and re thermal pad your graphics card. This could be needed for multiple reasons. Uh, specifically, if you're a miner, this is going to be something you have to do as basic maintenance. But additionally, if you just have a card that's not performing properly and you're like, what the heck's going on? Check this out right here. So, Without further ado, let's hop into the story and then we'll hop into how to do it. In my particular case, the problem that we had was that we are ordering cheaper GPUs. The reason they're cheap is because, well, everybody knows they perform like butthole. Yeah, we'll use that so we don't get flagged. I wonder if you get flagged on YouTube for that. Regardless, anyways, it had issues with uh, basically its thermal pad placement. And if you take a pic look at the picture here, what you'll notice is that the thermal pads aren't fully covering the memory modules. And that's really the only problem. And it's a quick, simple fix. And you can get these thermal pads two millimeter thick off of Amazon for about $10 and it'll do about six GPUs. So the particular model we're talking about is the MSI Radeon RX 5700 mech overclock. It's not the XT version, but the XT versions do have this issue as well. Currently, you can pick these up at a pretty good steal on Newegg, Amazon, B&H Photo, so forth, for about $330 after rebates, $340 before rebates. So to go ahead and take a look at them, but leave enough for me to go ahead and finish my farm off. And I picked these up because they are cheap and I already knew what the fix needed to be. There's plenty of people that have gone over this, including um, uh, tons of guys. I think uh, Hardware Unboxed did it. I think uh, Gamers Nexus was the first one to figure it out and so on and so forth. And so I already kind of knew just from staying up with tech exactly what was wrong with the cards and it didn't scare me at all. Now I got fortunate in a lot of the batches that I ordered, we didn't have too many cards. I think on the last set of eight cards, we had two that were overheating. And so basically the next step is to go ahead and fix it. First of all, first thing you need to do is get all the tools you'll need. I recommend a number one magnetic screwdriver, some scissors, and of course the thermal pad and thermal paste. Links will be in the description if you need to purchase these at any time. Once you've done that, you need to locate the GPU on the mining rig. There's a couple ways you can go about this. One way that a lot of people recommend is turning the fans down on all the rest of the cards and turning the fan all the way to 100% on the card that is malfunctioning. Go over to the rig and try to find the one with the fans going crazy. Because I have so many cards running with so many rigs, I can't really ever tell. So the way I like to do is just play the old uh, swap. So we take the GPU out, we swap it with another GPU until we find the GPU that is malfunctioning. In this particular case, we got extra lucky because it did match up with the GPU or the PCIe slots on the motherboard. And so our first swap was successful. We took a RX 480, which is the only 480 in the rig, and that made it even more simple because then we could read exactly which one it was and be like, oh, okay. We know that GPU 5 swapped in to GPU 6 and the 480 moved from slot 6 to slot 5 and we're good to go, right? So at that point, we removed the GPU from the rig and brought it into the hospital over here that's all messy now. So as we brought it in, we went ahead and got all of our tools together, the scissors, the screwdriver, and the thermal pad and the thermal paste, and we got to work. This card is super, super simple to go ahead and get the cooler off. It is just going to be four number one screws on the back of the motherboard. If you are in the United States, because of the repair laws, you don't have to worry about voiding warranty because technically they're not allowed to. You do have the right to repair. Of course, fighting that may be a little rough. So, you know, if you're worried about that, then maybe this isn't the route for you and you can just go pay the extra premium for a more expensive card. If you're trying to save some money and get a better ROI, well, here you go. So once you've removed those four screws, you can pull the cooler off. The fan connector is luckily long enough to lay the cooler basically side by side so you don't have to unplug the fan because that can be quite annoying and you can get to work. 
as you see, we definitely had issues with the coverage on the memory modules. So you're just going to take your scissors and cut to size. Make sure it covers the entire memory module on this particular card. You're going to have eight of them. That's going to be pretty common. One eight gigabytes, one module per gigabyte, blah, blah, blah. There you go. You slap those on, clean the paste off of the die and off of the cooler, apply the new paste, use something like a credit card or the leftover plastic film like I used here to go ahead and smooth out that thermal paste, slap the cooler back on, throw it back into your rig and go ahead and hop back into HiveOS or Windows and check the temperatures. Now HiveOS and Windows, you'll both be able to depending on the software you're using, like Hardware Info will have it for Windows or just built into HiveOS, you can click in and take a look at the memory temperatures. So once you do that, you can go ahead and confirm that it is staying nice and cool. In some cases, what I have noticed is on these mechs, you might lose um, a couple degrees on the core clock um, because of that extra little thickness on the thermal pads. I believe they're a little thinner uh, from the factory. I think I haven't really been able to measure them quite yet, but I'll get to that and we'll put another note for you guys later. Uh, just make sure you tighten it down good and maybe do a little bit of extra thermal paste. I haven't had any issues like that. That's just something I've heard of people having issues with when they go to the two millimeter pads. Uh, in this particular case, we didn't have that. In the previous case, we didn't have that either. It's just something to note. Um, I'm pretty happy. Basically, what we're able to do is get 5700 XTs hashing at 56 to 57 mega hash, right? for about $330. So there you go. Be sure to check the links down below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like, sub, and notification down below, and I will see you next Tuesday.